There's one particular song that is a classic and it always reminds me of that time. And it is the song, Living on a Prayer. How many of you know this song? Some of you who are like under 30 are like, who? John Bon, John what? You, you have no idea. You have to go and listen to these songs. They are classics. Now, the thing about this song is, it's all about a couple who don't have much. Okay, so he's lost his job. She's working in like Penny Mark or something, okay? And, but they say, well, at least we've got each other. At least we have each other. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, wherever I went, it seemed to be everywhere I went, they were playing this song. I switched on the radio, living on a prayer, went into the supermarket, living on a prayer. And I felt that God really spoke to me through this song. And I guess I believe that right now there are three prayers that we need to be living on. There are three prayers that we need to be praying. There are three things that we need to be talking to God about right now. Firstly, we need to be praying prayers about identity. Now, I don't know about you, how your last year or two has been, but since Corona started, I've not been able to work. Now, I'm a full-time mum. I'm also in full-time ministry with Liam, but I've always worked part-time in business. I've always worked within business. I used to be an HR manager. I used to work for the Hilton Hotels. I worked for a very large wine company for a long time. So I've always had that part of me, which was professional, going into the office and working. And yet since Corona started, suddenly I'm not doing any of that. Suddenly I'm a homeschooling mother. Give me a wave if you're a mum here today. Suddenly I've had my son at home for almost a whole year. He was only in school for about six weeks until recently. I have taught him how to speak, or not speak, but read and write German. I've taught him all maths. I've taught, man, we spent two months talking about what lives in your hedge, about worms, hedgehogs, you name it. I have had an education that just in case you didn't know, you never feed a hedgehog milk or it will die. Okay, I found out that in the last couple of months. Now I have to say as much as my son Dylan, who's now nine, he's a pleasure to have at home and he likes being at home. I can't say I love being a homeschooling mother. <laughs> I'm quite happy, you know, to drop them off at school. It's you know, it's quite nice. And my poor daughter, Cammie, who's 13, she sat in front of a computer screen for a year, as I'm sure many of your kids have doing online school. And at the same time, if you like our ministry duties and our church duties, for me personally, they've increased. Because as John said, we're lead pastors in Destiny Europe. So we have the three churches here in Germany. We have a church in Prague. We also work closely with a church in Poland, as well as now we have the online platforms in German, English, and the Filipino platform. So every week we've been recording messages in various languages for all these different platforms. And then as well as that, running and organizing the meetings in the different locations depending on those restrictions. So in some ways, we've never been busier than ever. And also for me personally, because now, if you want me to speak, you don't need to fly me on a plane and pay for a hotel and do all the rest of it. You just say, Fiona, will you record a word? So I've been speaking at student conferences. I've been teaching at Destiny College a lot. So it's been a fantastic time, but it's been actually a very, very busy time. And I kind of have missed going to the office. I've, I kind of don't like being in my cellar, which is where we do all our recording. I actually call it the dungeon. <laughs> if you ever come to stay, you can come and see our dungeon. It's Liam's office in our recording studio. But it's not quite the same just, you know, going down the stairs to my dungeon. And I kind of have missed not actually just getting out. And I have to be honest, that sense of I guess putting on a dress, putting on a pair of heels and going to a professional environment is something that I didn't realize was such a strong part of me. Now, am I still a child of God? Yes. Is my identity in Christ still in Christ? Of course it is. But maybe it was just a little bit of who I am, that professional woman who would go, who would earn a salary and did a good job to provide for my family. And I'm sure like me, many of you will feel this sense of, the world has changed and perhaps your life has changed. And the actual fabric of our society, the way they work, the way we live, the way we socialize, so much has changed. And those normalities which perhaps you got used to have changed. What, what a lovely thing it was in the last few weeks to go to a restaurant. 
Remember what restaurants were? Like, yay! Someone else makes my food. Oh, and I don't need to do the dishes afterwards. Hey, what could get better than that? That was the norm before. Now it's like novelty. I'm like, what? We could go out and eat? Oh. But you know, maybe like me, you find yourself kind of in a little bit of an uncomfortable place. Because of restrictions, because of things that have happened, you suddenly have found your place thinking, I don't feel quite comfy here. This is not, not quite me. And even now that we've had our first few weeks of lockdown release, if you like, I don't know about you, but we don't know what's coming. We don't know what the future holds. And I know many people that are fearful and dreading if we get to the end of the summer and we have to go back into lockdown restrictions. And, you know, will I be back homeschooling my son? Possibly. Will our children be back at home? Will you ever go back to the office five days a week? Probably not. For some of you, you're like, praise God, that's great. <laughs> There are no certainties. Our lives and the world we live in is such an uncertain place. But here's something that is certain. Psalm 139, 13 and 14. For you created my innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. This verse goes on to say how God knows every single detail of our lives. He knows when we rise and when we sleep. All those quirky little things about you that probably nobody else knows, he knows them. All those little things that nobody even notices that you do in a day, he knows. Liam always laughs at me because if I always have a cup of English tea in the morning, I like Earl Grey tea. And it's the one thing that here in Germany does not taste the same. So if I have anybody coming from Scotland or grandma and grandpa are sending parcel, I'm always saying, please send me Twinnings Earl Grey tea. So they send it across for me. But Liam always laughs and he says, I don't know why you do that. He says, if I make you a cup of tea or if you, ha you never drink the whole cup. He says, there's always a bit left in the bottom. And I always say to him, well, I said, one, because it goes cold, and two, what if there's a spider in the bottom? <laughs> because I have milk in my tea and you can't see. And he always, you can see him at the dishwasher picking up, oh, putting out the last, and you know, those quirky little things nobody else knows about you. God knows. God created you. It says, created your innermost parts, wove you together in your mother's womb. Every single little detail of you, down to every freckle, every mole, that funny nail on your toe, he knows it all. There's nothing missing. Every detail of your character, your personality, he created that and made you the wonderful, unique person you are today. Isn't it amazing that all over the world, of the millions of people and billions of people there are, there are no two people exactly alike. Even twins are different. Although you might think at first they look the same, they're different. Their characters, their personalities, subtle things. God's created us to be unique. And I want to encourage you tonight to revisit, I guess, what I would call some of the basic Christian principles, which is who you are in Christ. And I don't want you to feel ashamed or feel uncomfortable that maybe the last season has shaken you. Maybe you felt you're in a place that's not comfortable, it's not natural. We need to be praying once again over our identity. I am a child of God. I am a daughter of the King. I am a son of the Most High. And you know, when we are going back and we're reading and repeating those verses and those promises, I'm a new creation in Christ. It gives you strength. It gives you security. I found a new one, which I absolutely love. Philippians 3.20 says, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly awaiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Isn't that fantastic? We are citizens of heaven. He will take our weak bodies and change them into glorious heavenly bodies. You know, I am not a restricted, masked citizen of Germany. I am a citizen of heaven today. 
You are a citizen of heaven. That is where you're standing. If we were to look on your spiritual passport, it says citizen of heaven, child of God. That is who you are, regardless of your nationality, your country, how you find yourself here, how much you identify with German culture or not, whatever language you speak. If you've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, you have a stamp that says you are a citizen of heaven. And there is a glorious mortal body waiting for you. Wouldn't that be fun? Ladies, what do you think about getting a great new body when you get to heaven? Hey! One that it doesn't matter what you've eaten, has no effect, can eat anything you like, drink anything you like, and it's still glorious. Even on a bad day, no bad hair days, only good hair days. Men, you'll all be there with your six packs, <laughs> your glorious heavenly body. Wouldn't that be good? Secondly, we need to be living on prayers of protection. The Bon Jovi song says we have to hold on to what we've got. And you know, one of the problems with lockdown is that it intensifies everything. If you had marriage issues before, lockdown will have just intensified them. If you had issues before in your life, Lockdown just intensifies them. If you struggle with alcohol or with food or with playing too many video games on a Friday night, guess what? Lockdown intensifies them because during lockdown there was nothing else to do. So every single night, Ben and Jerry's is calling from the freezer, eat me, eat me, eat me, or the bag of chips or the bottle of beer, whatever it is for you. Lockdown is intensified. And the question is one of control. Are you controlling your choices or are your choices controlling you? Let me say that again. Are you controlling your choices or are your choices controlling you? And I really believe that right now we need to be living on what I call humble prayers. Now notice I'm saying humble prayers, not desperation prayers. In this song, it talks about their desperate situation. He's lost his job. They don't have much. They only have each other. There's a real sense of desperation. And I see many people at the moment living in that place of desperation, living in a place of fear, living in the place of uncertainty. But what I want to encourage you to do is to be in a humble place. And humble or humility is not saying, oh, I'm a worm, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm just, you know, nothing. I'm so insignificant. Don't look at me. I, yeah, I'm just nothing. That's not humility. That's stupidity. Yeah, there is a difference. Humility is being able to come to God and say, God, I need you. I need you in my life. I don't want to do this on my own. I need you to be part of my life every single day, leading me, guiding me, speaking to me. That's humility, because humility says, I can't do it, you need to be involved. If you're not humble, you can get very busy managing your life. You can get very busy doing stuff. But God wants us to be in a place where we come before him every day and say, God, I need you to speak to me today. I need you to be with me today. I need you to guide me today. And you know, I've seen, I have, and I've heard many testimonies about God's protection. And I'm so grateful for the many, many times where I've been in my car, maybe with the kids, and I have been that close to an accident. And somehow, supernaturally, God's hand of protection has just been on us and nothing's happened. Or there's been moments maybe where the children have fallen or something has happened. And in that moment, my prayer has been, God, let it just be nothing. Let it be something insignificant. Let it not be broken bones. Let it not be a big issue. And every single time, no, Mrs. Smith, everything's okay. You know, you go to the ER, you wait for the, everything's fine. It's just this, it's just that. And I'm so grateful that God's hand of protection. And, and when you're a Christian, that hand of protection that's on you is like an umbrella. And sometimes as Christians, we forget you live under that umbrella. And if, like me, you've been a Christian for a long time, you've had that umbrella blessing your life for many years. You actually forget what it's like to live outside, to live within the fear. I have friends who are so fearful. They are so anxious. They barely will come out of their homes because they're worried about what will happen next. And when you live under this place of protection, what I love... 
And what I want to do when I get to heaven and I get my glorious new body, one of the first things I'm going to ask for is a particular DVD, okay, that I want to watch. And the DVD I want to watch is all the times and all the situations where I was not aware God's hand supernaturally moved to protect me and my family. Where I was just driving along and I didn't see the accident about to happen. Because I know there is going to be a whole catalogue of examples where God in his graciousness has said, no, no, that's not for them. No, no, no car accident today. And he's just moved in without me even realising it, without me even seeing it. I truly believe there's going to be a whole stack and I'm going to sit there with a big tub of popcorn and watch that DVD. Because God's hand of protection is so strong over you as a father, as a friend, as a God. You do not realise actually the lengths and the extremes he will go to to keep his children safe. And so I believe we need to keep praying those humble, humble prayers of protection. Look after us, look after our families and keep us safe. And thirdly today, we need to be living on what I would call fresh prayers. Fresh prayers. I know many people who will say, oh, God spoke to me in 1982, probably during a Bon Jovi song. <laughs> 1982 and God said this and oh, it was so profound. It was so important. Well, guess what? God's still speaking. God didn't say, let there be light, and then, right, guys, I'm done. Okay, I'm retiring. Done it. Imagine if God had stopped there. But God was always speaking. God is a speaking, speaking God. And it's great that God spoke to you last week or last month or last year, but you need to know what God is saying today. You need to know what he's saying for you, for your family, for your situation. In Rosenheim, we have two new venues. I met telling the church this this morning. Previously, we met in a fitness studio, but now that everything's beginning to open up again, we've moved our first meeting on a Sunday morning into a restaurant, which is lovely because when you sit down and listen to the word, you can take your mask off and have a coffee, which is a blessing. The second meeting we have is in a dance school, and it's up a level. And it's a great venue because we can finally have praise, worship, the full band, and it's just such a blessing. But last week, I'd led worship in both of the meetings, and I sat down in the second meeting, and was Liam was beginning to preach, and I gotta tell you, it was warm. You know, I was a little bit sweaty and sticky and uncomfortable, and myself and my singer were kind of sitting, you know, <laughs> trying to regain some sense of composure. And our head steward was going round and she was opening the windows and there was a window just behind where Liam was speaking. And she opened this window and it was like, oh, oh fresh air. Oh, we sat, we kind of smiled at each other like, oh, oh. And you could just feel the breeze because we were one floor up. And it was a little bit windy. It was a very, very hot day. It was about 35, 36 degrees, but there was just this beautiful breeze. So I was just sitting and enjoying the breeze. And the window was moving a little bit, but it was fine. And then this guy behind us got up and shut the window. Now, myself and my singer looked at each other like, what, what an idiot. Suddenly we weren't so worshipful, apologies. We were just like, what? And then I'm sitting thinking, I'm senior pastor in this church. If I want that window open. <laughs> but then I thought, no, I can't do that because everybody will see me getting up and open. And then it might disturb Liam. So for the next 30 minutes, I sat there sweating, never heard a word that Liam said, was just angry with a stupid man that had stood up and closed all the windows. So I was like, Why am I saying this? You need fresh air. You need fresh breath from God. You need to be praying fresh prayers, having fresh conversations with him. Matthew 4 says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Here's a question for you. How often do you eat? Some of you are thinking, I wish I was eating now. Hurry up, Fiona. I'm hungry. How often do you eat? Every hour? Every few hours? If you have a newborn baby in the house, I'm guessing they're probably eating every two hours. How often do you eat? Has anyone not eaten at all this week? 
Anyone not eaten at all this year? Anyone not eaten since 1982? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. We need to be regularly praying and talking with God. You know, prayer is a two-way thing. And when you have fresh prayers, fresh communication, when you're freshly drawing on God and giving him the opportunity to speak into your life, it keeps you fresh. Because you know what happens if you're not fresh and there's no fresh air? Guess what? You begin to smell. Look at your neighbor and have a sniff. Mm, You begin to smell when there's no fresh air. The air becomes stale. Your life becomes stale. And for some of you here, you haven't been praying fresh prayers recently. You might have got busy, might be because you're back at work with lockdown restrictions being lifted. I want to encourage you today to come back and breathe fresh prayers. Come back, breathe God in again afresh. Don't let your life become stale. And you know, those moments that you get with God when he speaks to you freshly, it brings such comfort. It brings such solace. It brings such encouragement when you know what God is saying right now. And you know, I'm not really one for a lot of jewellery. I'm not really a kind of bling bling kind of person. I don't like things that are sparkly and flashy. However, a few years ago, someone gave me one of these bracelets. And you know, they're not a Christian company, but they make jewellery, I guess, with meaning. So bear with me, men, for a second, because I know you're not going to get this, but if you're listening, this would be a good gift for your wife or your partner, okay? This is me helping you for the next birthday or Christmas. And the first one I was given is this little one here, which is an acorn. And it simply has the title of, out of small things, greatness can come. And when I got that, that really blessed me. I thought, what a great principle to be thinking of when I look at that, out of tiny things, out of tiny faithfulness, out of a little bit of sowing, greatness can come. But this other one that is really what I want to talk to you about today, it's a little symbol. And on the back of it, it says breath of life. And I love this because it's such a simple thing. It's not a verse. It's not a scripture pasted on my wall. It's just something that when I see it, I think, God, you are my breath. God, I want to breathe you in today. God, I just need a moment. Sometimes it's just a couple of minutes in a car when I'm taxiing one of our kids here and there. Sometimes it's just a couple of moments where I just have to go, oh God, just protect us today. Be with us today. God, just just fill me again. Fill me fresh. And I want us just before we finish today, just to take a moment. I believe some of you in here, you just need a fresh filling of God. You just need to stand in his presence, open your hands and just let him fill you up. Let his Holy Spirit do a work in you. And the thing about the Holy Spirit that's great is I can pray prayers over you and they would be very nice prayers. I can even do it in German if you want, just for fun. Yeah, definitely can't do it in any Indian language. Okay, so don't ask me for that. But I can pray some pretty good prayers over you. But I cannot do what the Holy Spirit can do. It's only the Holy Spirit that right now knows exactly what you're facing, knows exactly your circumstances, your situation. And it's only the Holy Spirit who knows what work needs to be done in you. And our job, church, is not to work it out. It's simply to open yourself up and let him do it. Let him come with a fresh sense of his spirit. Let him come and do only what he can do and to touch you deep, deep down in your spirit and in your soul and to minister to you. And I'd like us just if we can sing that song again, Maria. Just be open. As I said, I don't know your situation. I don't know your circumstance, but God does. And I believe today for some of you, you simply need to receive and breathe in from God. So let's just stand and let's just worship God together. Take this moment, take this opportunity that God wants to do something special in you just now.